Hi guys, this is Christina again. Today we're going to be making this really cute elastic waist skirt. This is the small, the child's small size, but there you can make it whatever size that you need. The first thing you're going to do is get your fabric cut to size. Then you're going to lay right sides together at the raw edges. And you're going to pin your long raw edge together. And you always want to pin perpendicular to the direction that you're sewing so that you can get right up to your pin and pull it out. The next step is that you're going to sew a straight stitch where you pinned and your seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch. Whenever you start and stop a straight stitch, you always want to make sure that you back stitch. and don't sew over a pin. Then you're gonna finish your seam edge with a zigzag stitch. So you're gonna go to zigzag, and whenever you zigzag, your seam allowance is 1 8 so it goes right off the edge. And you don't need to back stitch on a zigzag. The next thing you're going to do is zigzag all around the top edge of your skirt. So it's handy if you can take the arm off of the machine like this. You're going to open your skirt up and zigzag around one raw edge just in the circle. is to iron that zigzag edge over because you're creating a casing. A casing is like a little tunnel that you feed elastic through. Okay, so now we're going to turn this top edge over an inch and a half. This is what I like to call measure, press, spin. So first you're going to fold the edge over and we're measuring it. We want this fold to be inch and a half, so I'm going to use a seam gauge and I slid the marker on the seam gauge to inch and a half, so this is the measure, and then this is the press. Press always means iron. I'm going to iron that bit, and then I'm going to spin. So again, I'm going to measure inch and a half. I'm going to press, and I'm going to spin. And I'm going to measure press spin all the way around that top edge so that that fold measures at an inch and a half. So same thing, we're going to do measure press spin, but this time it's we're going to do half inch. So I'm going to scoot my marker to half an inch, and then I'm going to measure press spin at half an inch. So there's my half inch. I'm going to press. I'm going to spin but since you're going to still have a raw edge on this I'm going to do this twice so I'm going to go all the way around the bottom edge of this skirt doing measure press spin at half an inch but I'm going to do that twice so I'm going to end up with a double folded hem like that at half an inch the next thing we're going to do is sew down this top edge of our casing, but we need to leave an opening about an inch and a half to two inches uh, so we can feed our elastic through. So what I like to do is put a pin where I'm going to start and then pin where I'm going to stop. So I remember to not sew that closed. So with a straight stitch, I'm going to aim for about the top peaks of my zigzags right there so I can have this stitched down but still wide enough for my elastic to go through. Then when 
when I get to my stop pin, I'm going to take that out and back stitch right there. The next thing I'm going to do is sew down my hem. And I can sew my hem all the way shut because, of course, I don't need to leave an opening for that because elastic's not going to go in there. So I'm going to flip it around. And now you have to be pretty careful about your seam allowance on your hem. So I like to uh, line it up on the machine and notice I'm starting at a seam. You always want to start at a seam when you sew a hem. And I want to make sure that the edge of my fabric is always going to be at about that 3 8 inch mark because I want to make sure that my hem is equidistant, um, my stitching is equidistant from my fold to my stitches. And now my hem is sewn up. Always remember to trim your threads as you go. It makes for a tidier sewing project. Now that we have our top casing sewn down, we're going to take a piece of elastic that is your waist measurement minus one inch. You're going to also take a safety pin and you're going to Open it up and pin the end of your elastic so you can feed it through the casing. So how you do that is you're going to go to your opening and you have to scrunch the fabric over the pin and pull the back. Sometimes this takes a little bit of practice, but as soon as you get the hang of it, you can do it really fast. So you're just scrunching the fabric over the safety pin and pulling it through. Also, make sure that you don't lose this end of the, of the elastic in your casing because if you do, you're going to have to take the whole thing out and do it all, all over again. Once you get to the other end, you're just going to pull your safety pin out. Make sure your elastic didn't twist in the casing, and then you're going to pin your two ends of your elastic <laughs> together. Like this. And then pull your elastic all to the inside of your skirt. And tuck that in there. And then at this point, you want to try your skirt on to make sure that the elastic is um, not too tight or too loose uh, before you sew it up. After you fit your skirt and make sure that the elastic is comfortable to you, you're going to, you can cut off any extra if it's too loose. But then, if once your elastic's okay, you're going to overlap your ends about a half of an inch overlap like that and then you're just going to sew them together back and forth back and forth like this doesn't need to be pretty it just needs to hold then you're going to pull the elastic into the casing and you just have to sew up this little opening that you left. So you're going to start where your last stitches ended. And then fill in that gap with your stitches. And that's it. You have yourself a cute new skirt. It's 
all ready to go.